Hey everybody, on this edition of Crying in My Car, a podcast for teachers, we talk about the golden age of the calculator. Where did you fit in in the status quo of the school when it came to that calculator? Then we're going to discuss the upcoming solar eclipse and NASA helping out the teachers to help out the students. Lastly, we're going to discuss Florida teachers unions. We are going under 60% and they need your help. Stick around, Crying in My Car starts now. Hey everybody, welcome to Crying in My Car, a podcast for teachers. My name is Devin Siebold, got James Yan in the house, and we are the parent-teacher duo. We're mm -hmm. here to make you laugh, ease that stress. And uh, James, I'm just going to go right into it. You know, it's uh -oh. been a, what? Uh-oh. No, you said I'm going to go right into it, like you got something on your mind, man. Yeah, I do. I mean, I okay. always have stuff on my mind, you do. James. You do. Uh, but I want to talk about, just briefly, um, it's officially launched, a Teacher's Pet Care. Come on. Com. Teacherspetcare.com is my uh, my charity. It is a nonprofit. You, mm -hmm. you can donate. It might be tax deductible. You get the tax deductible receipt, you know, mm -hmm. depending on your tax advisor. But I've got it up and running. I'm accepting donations. We're still partnering behind the scenes. I've partnered with a few veterinary offices, and I'm working on some shelters down in South Florida. Nice. I'm trying to keep it. Everybody's ass is it going to be national? Eventually, that's the goal. Gotcha. But you can't just go national no. on a massive scale with no. helping out teachers uh, with their pets. Yes. And so it's a, a charity that I start to help basically teachers cover the cost of uh, pet care, adoption, and uh, getting the um, uh, shots, and eventually emergency care too, but that is really pricey. Uh, and you have to understand- I just found out. Yeah, you have to understand, so far it's it's literally 80% funded directly by me. So when wow. you come to a show, a comedy show, Board Teachers Comedy Show, and you buy my book, so mm -hmm. I have my book on for sale there, yes. I donate 100% of the proceeds directly nice. to the company. Okay. Uh, not the company, the the well it is a company but it's a charity charity yeah and it, it's so weird how the everything works I, yes. i'm so new to this mm -hmm. but i've learned a lot along the way i'm funding it i'm trying to provide some help for teachers and we're getting some adoption drives done and it's all going to be updated on the website if you'd like to donate you can go there and donate if you don't want to donate bookmark it and maybe come back and see hey did they open up something a shelter near me also don't hesitate to reach out too so it, it like is that. uh something that i'm trying to help out teachers so if i if the charity can't help you out i may be able to help you out too mm -hmm. i just like to Hopefully, uh, I don't. I don't want to see teachers suffer. I don't want to see uh, no. the pets, you know, go by the wayside. And I know that it's so hard out there for teachers to afford pet care today. It's crazy. It, it is. So I, I just learned about it because I we uh, live with Michelle, or uh, my mother in law now, and she has a dog mm -hmm. named Mickey. Great dog. But I had no idea how much it costs to take care of them. Yeah. If they get sick, you go to the vet. It's hundreds of dollars. Yep. And if you have a surgery, it's right out of your pocket. It's thousands of. Yeah. Of dollars for them. I had no idea. So And and it's interesting because literally, James, mm -hmm. the day that I got the website done. Yeah. I said the website is done. We're ready to start start helping teachers. That day, my pup, yeah, my little dog, yeah. Wink, he's a little chihuahua. Yeah. He uh was outside and his back nail got caught on um one of the little railings and it broke uh, and when it breaks it bleeds and you and i didn't know this mm. i thought you just it's just off and that's it no it has like bad risk of infection it needs to come entirely off mm. so we had to take them into the the uh, pet care this was after eight o'clock they were open till 11 emergency services I, he was bleeding his little toes bleed i gotta get him in i got him in they did all of it james 850 dollars mm. What? Wow. And and I was I left there and I go, this is why I'm doing this. Yes, yes. <laughs> this is because if I was still teaching on my no Polk way. County Schools paycheck, there's no way my rent is going to be late. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> for two months. For two months. <laughs> yeah. And so I I really I mean it was so affirming going home going. I bet. Man, I really want to take that pressure I off. I mean it it lit a fire in me. I was like. 
Wait, I got to get this. Well, how's the little guy doing? He's doing great. Okay. Yeah, he's okay. doing great. Yeah, All right, he's, man. By the way, uh, the cone, he's a tiny little <laughs> chihuahua in this cone, and you set him outside to go pee, and he just just stares at you. He's yeah. like, I hate my life. Yes. And so we ended up uh, changing out the cone for the inflatable donut. Aww. <laughs> so he had a giant donut around his head, and it was it was adorable. Poor guy. But yeah, you know, but you give him the medicine, and, and he's recovered, and everything's fine. But uh, but yeah, I just don't want to see teachers have to do go through that. You know, that's one of those things where, I mean, if you don't have the 850 bucks, it's like- What do you do? What do you do? Yeah. You got to get credit, you know, mm-hmm. care credit, and, and care credit only helps so much. That's right. You got to- ask people do a go fund me for your dog just to help their toe and it's like but i have noticed I something that. though about yeah. pet owners because i'm one of you now yeah we stick together you're wait you got a pet i got the dog because oh, we yeah, live with yeah, yeah so mickey okay. is mine now yeah, yeah, that's yeah. right awesome um and we stick together mm-hmm. dog people especially when you walk your dog every neighbor that has a dog you will get to know them yep they will stop you and say hey yeah. How you doing? What what's his name? <laughs> yeah. So what's funny is uh, I'll bring up a little story. We have somebody in um our neighborhood uh-huh. that it's this this old couple and their dog is as old as them. Aww. And their dog is That's like the best. He's so geriatric. Aww. And he comes uh, 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 walking Aww. down the street. Mm-hmm. They don't have a leash on him. He just walks so he's a little chihuahua and he is completely gray Aww. and he just walks down the street and he's winks buddy so he literally stops in front of the house and looks in the window and you you're sitting there cooking dinner and you Aww. look outside and there's this old dog he's like can we come out to say hello <laughs> and i'm like oh yeah yeah you open the door he goes down there and wink hates everything and everybody but that dog he That's likes funny. that dog and yeah. he's, he's like hey and hey, they, buddy. Yeah, and, and then he just walks back inside, and they just say hello. And, but, yeah, but it's adorable. How nice is that, though? Two grumpy yeah. old men. I will. And, and yeah. that's the thing, too, is one of the things I want to say, too, is is pets are, are so needed, too, by teachers because there's so much therapy there. Dude, I come back from being on the road. I am worn out. Mm. Chances are I came in on a 3 o'clock flight yeah, in the morning. Did. To make it home, I walk through the door and that pet just jumps into my arms and it's like, ah. Ah. yeah. When I was teaching, I mean, I had my dog Landon and he was a Corgi Lab mix. Mm. And, you know, walking through that door and seeing something that wants to see you, <laughs> you know, for the first time all day after yes. teaching and seeing something that's so happy to be there. I mean, there was just so much energy in life and I would have to take them for walks and I'm getting exercise myself and it's, mm-hmm. it, it's, it's therapeutic. I think it teachers is. should have pets. It is. And so, uh, if I want to say, the last thing I'll say on that is, uh, if you have, uh, I've, I've actually got a lot of messages from teachers that work at or do own shelters. Or, oh, that's yeah, nice. There was a, a cat rescue, another rescue that I'm going to try to work with in South Florida. He owns like two or three. Mm-hmm. And, um, and I would love to to help out. So if you are in a position that you can make some decisions, some nice. choices, some partnering decisions to partner with the charity, just message me on any of the social media platforms. So we're just trying to help the teachers, trying to get you know uh, some 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 love back to the teachers and love back to the pets. That's, That's nice. the goal. And you have cats too, right? No, I don't have any. You cats. Have no cats. Okay, I, they're highly allergic to cats. Uh, gotcha. Gotcha. Yeah, in fact, I I it's funny you say that because I was like, where was I? I was in. Um, uh, one of these cities, like not Binghamton, it was a different one. And um, there was a, a cafe down the street. And I was like, man, I need some coffee. And it was like called the Cat Fay. And I was like, ooh, the Cat Fay. They must be fans of cats. And I walk in and it's like literally you've seen where uh, Ace Ventura walks in the door of the uh, the guy who has all the heads, all the eyes. Like, yeah, yeah. yeah. I walked in and there's 90 cats all just, around me. And I was like, hanging out. Oh, yeah. I, I could feel my face swelling up. Just, I love cats. Don't uh-huh. get me wrong. Got it. I'm just highly allergic. allergic. To- <laughs> you can't even be in the same room. It, it just really gets to me. Gotcha. And, uh, and my kids too. So love cats, support them. Definitely, mm-hmm. you know, teacher's pet covers all animals, mm-hmm. reptiles, whatever. But, uh, yeah, I just highly allergic. I, I like the attitude of cats. They make me laugh. Cats mm-hmm. are like, listen, I don't need you, but <laughs> right? I'm going to take this food. <laughs> <laughs> right? I like that about them. Yeah. One thing that I wanted to bring up teacher related today is uh, I want to talk about um, the lost art of the calculator. Oh. Now, 
kids today will pull up their cell phone. Mm -hmm. And there's even websites uh, to pull up where you have like scientific calculators. The graphing calculator. And and graphing calculators. Mm -hmm. But I just remember as a kid walking in. Do you remember walking in with a graphing calculator and you just pull it out? It's like, oh, we're doing addition today. I mean, slow motion. Just yes. Boom. Yes. And everybody's like, no. <laughs> no. What? That one makes lines. That's crazy. What is going on? Yes. And the graphing calculator. There was, the, uh, of course, the king of all calculators. Do you know it? T100? The TI-84, bro. Okay. The TI-84. That's what it was, yes. The Texas Instruments. Instruments, yes. Texas Instruments. Yes. I mean, that was yeah. the Cadillac. If you had the that. The Rolls Royce. Mm. The, you would pull out the TI-84 people, oh my gosh. And it was just, it was something to have. It was. And it was so funny, too, because I'm in like sixth grade, seventh grade math class, and we're just doing square roots. Yeah. And kids are like... Oh, really? Uh, excuse me, miss. Sorry. Um, what was the cosine tangent that we were going over? <laughs> and you're like, you're like, I hate you so much. And they're, they're, so does the invertices, uh, is that going to be a positive or a negative? And she's like, it's just addition. Where there's nothing needed for that, you know? And, 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 I, I, I love the calculator because it looked cool. Because it came with a sheath. Remember that? Uh-huh. Remember that? You like, felt so... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it fit over so nice. And, but you were, yeah. I mean, there were calculators out there that I, I look back and compare the hourly wages of parents to how much the calculator costs. A hundred like, plus dollar calculator. It, it'd be like if my kid came up to me today and was like, I need something for math class that costs $3,000. I would be like, you don't need math. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I could hire someone to do it on the abacus for you. Yeah, yeah. but those were expensive, man. When you Crazy. came with that graphing calculator, that was the biggest deal. I know families that passed them down. Yeah. When they had multiple kids. Like, mm-hmm. you didn't go buy another one. No, no, no. This is yours now. There were tricks and stuff, too. Oh, absolutely. One person I distinctly remember had a game. And the fact that there was a game on your calculator That's that you could play crazy. on the tiny little screen... I mean, I, I just, it changed their social status throughout the school. We yeah. carried them to their next class. <laughs> <laughs> we just thought they were heavily, like, there's you knew no way arrived. you have that. I have arrived, everyone. <laughs> yes, yes. But what was so funny is you'd get all these nice fancy calculators, and mm. then you'd go to take the test, and they would throw the blue and red calculator in front of you and it was just and it and by the way i don't know if i'm the only person i had to be the you had to do this too would you ever sit in and you'd have that calculator in front of you and you just take your finger and you'd cover up the solar panel oh yeah and watch it fade away yeah. like michael j fox and back to the future <laughs> and you're like you're like i bring you life, life. and then you it'd be like Woo! I'm back. I and literally then, would say it. Like, and I would see. It was I like, would say it. It was like Titanic too. Like you'd see how many compartments you could fill up. So you could see that there were five like solar panels and you'd cover three and be like, you can still survive on three, mm. but can you survive on two? two. <laughs> it's like, it's like, oh, and uh, it, yeah, and it would start to fade and you're like, you're sinking, you're, you're sinking. sinking. And it, it won, you know, and it was, I don't know, man. I Maybe I just had too much time on my hand. Do you remember the one kid? It was a cool kid that had the calculator watch. Dude. Oh, that, what y'all know about that out that there? That Casio oh, calculator ow. watch. You, and and th- it was funny, too, because they would set an alarm mid-class. And absolutely. They'd be like, beep, 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 and they'd be like, sorry, guys, just my calculator watch. <laughs> <laughs> and it was like, it was literally like they were pressing unlock on an Aston Martin. They're like, yeah, and yeah. you're like, no. No. No way. Casio. <laughs> Dude, it's crazy. And literally, you talk to them, and you'd be like, "So, hey, man, uh, what are you doing after school? I don't know. Let me calculate how much time I have. <laughs> Two hours plus three hours divided by because it's got order of operations equals and, order you know. of operations. <laughs> Use it as a pickup line. Hey, girl, I'm looking at my calculator watch. Me plus you equals happiness. <laughs> yeah, I want to get all up on that pim dash. Right. <laughs> <laughs> if you still We're have a calculator watch, please let us know. Yeah. Just, if you kept it all these years, well, like, they do. Yeah. The Apple watches. 
It's true. It's got a calculator got on it. My my watch as well, man. Your watch has a calculator. Yeah, absolutely, man. Oh, Come on, man. look at. Oh. I didn't know you. Had, oh, yeah. Okay. I, I got a real band oh, you're on it. Come on now. You didn't have to come on to my show like come that. Come on, bro. You know how we do. If y'all uh, want to find me, just to take out your GPS and is, put in at you. If you flip that over and it says Texas Instruments on the back, I may <laughs> carry you out of here to your car. You will not carry me. <laughs> you will try. Right. I, yeah. Let's calculate it. It's Can we do it? <laughs> it says no. <laughs> I just, I don't know, man. I just thought the calculator was such a thing. And now it's, it's, it's a lost art. It was our iPhone. It was. It really yeah. was, man. It was before the iPhone. Yeah. Uh, all right. Um, let's see. Uh, one other thing I want to talk about before we get into the teachers in the news is the outside hobbies. So I, I like hobbies. Mm-hmm. And I find that there's a lot of teachers that have a passion. Now, I know some of you are out there like, who has time for a hobby? Uh, a lot of teachers do. And it's basically just your, it's not necessarily a hobby. To me, it's a mental health uh, yeah. uh, break. Yes. Yeah. I, I played guitar. Do you have a, a hobby that takes you away from the stress of the real world? Yes. What do you do? Mine was two things. Comic books yep. and drawing. And drawing. Yes. Yeah, so I've, I've seen some of your drawings. In fact, our old radio show, you actually drew the logo. logo. yeah. And I had no idea how talented you were until I saw that. And then you also did a picture of uh, the Joker, right? Yes. That was unbelievable. Thank you. I mean, yeah, that looked man. like it was straight out of a comic book. Yeah. But when you do it, don't you find that it's like kind of cathartic? It's, it takes you to a different place. Yes. Yeah. Because you can get lost in the process of just creating or doing something that's not work related. You have to do this. Yeah. Yeah. It feels good. I felt that way um, about playing guitar. Mm-hmm. So I've been on the road with uh, board teachers. And when I, I'm out there, I wish I could take my guitar. So I actually am going to start taking up ukulele because I get stressed. It's smaller. Yeah. Traveling and, and, and doing these shows and stuff. I mean, it's a lot of work. And I it like is. to de-stress. And I sit in my hotel room and I'm on my phone. And I'm like, I got to figure out a better hobby. Mm -hmm. I talked to some of these teachers, and they have some crazy great hobbies. I see a lot of plant teachers. A lot of plant teachers. Okay. Our buddy Ross, did you know that? Do you know what he does? No. He's got bonsai trees. No. Yeah, he's, he's into bonsai. Yeah. I like that. I think that's cool. Yeah. I would like to get into something like that, but I grew a garden one time and I thought the garden was great. And then typical Florida weather ruined it. Yeah. And, it, and a- after sitting there waiting for your carrots to be ready for like six weeks and then pulling them out, you, you got a whole huge head and you're like, Wah! and then it's like, <laughs> yeah, like, oh. it's like, this is smaller than a baby gotcha. carrot. This, this yeah. is going to be a snack. Yeah. And I'm starving to death. Yes, pretty much. <laughs> but uh, I, I liked planting. I thought planting was a lot of fun. And I, th- I love doing plants. I would like to get into plants more, mm-hmm. but I'm just not home enough anymore. Over the summer, maybe. You're going to try it out? Uh, yeah. Okay. There's a lot of teachers out there that do like crocheting. Uh, some teachers like to um, uh, do uh, a lot of uh, collecting of things. Mm-hmm. I collected sports cards, too. I mm. thought that was a lot of fun. Uh, it just depends, man. But there's a lot of teachers that have crafts, hobbies, passions. Mm-hmm. And I'd love to hear about yours. Do you have a unique passion, unique hobby? Let us know in the comments. If you got pictures of it, we would love to see. I love seeing what teachers do to hopefully de-stress. And if you just don't have any time for that stuff, completely understand you know it's it's a lot of time consuming to try to pick up a new skill a new hobby but i will say that it kept me sane uh, while i was teaching whatever keeps your head out of an oven find that yeah in your life Uh, (laughs) 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 okay i'm sorry you never heard that expression yeah yeah okay Uh, (laughs) (laughs) okay all right uh next one uh i want to go to the teachers in the news let's do the teachers in the news This first one in Indiana, they have opened up a attorney general has opened up an eyes on education portal. And it is a site launched by the Republican uh, to report indoctrination. Um, And basically any sort of teachers or parents, sorry, that have a problem with their um, students, uh, something their student says, uh, a idea that comes from a teacher they can report it and uh they are saying that the the union is strictly against this it's dangerous to att- we're attacking public education we're looking for a fight you're trying to start a war and the thing is is this is not the first website to open up like this mm-hmm. I, I told you you know we've talked about this stuff on here it's spreading 
Yes. It's all over. Once, once yes. one idea passes and you get an idea, then it's all of a sudden everywhere. And it's so frustrating. Uh, but yeah, there, it, apparently it's gained um, traction in Republican led states to basically try to target teachers. And uh, the, it says that they're looking for real examples of socialist indoctrination in classroom. Uh, but apparently, uh, and just so you know, this includes a pride flag hanging in your classroom. Uh, any teacher-related materials that they disagree with, things that are basically they're they're fighting against, you know. And so, if you see any of that, there's a website to report it, like a Crime Stop. Yeah, uh, that's what I was going to liken it to. It's like uh, <sighs> you're doing something wrong, so we're going to report you. What's that going to do? I mean, it's just—is it to make teachers fear their jobs? Because I'm telling you, you're, they're just going to leave. They're not going to live in fear. They're going to go. Don't they already, though? A don't lot they, of them. Don't they already? We talked about it before. Like, yeah. the fact that I can't say anything because I am I fear that you're going to come get me, like, yeah. and fire me. It's it's sad, but that's, and, you know, and it's, it's interesting, too, because I would like uh, the first day of school, I think the parents should jot down all their social medias, and then I report you if I find something I disagree with. Because you're and a they parent. they come to your job. Yeah. And they question you. Mm -hmm. I, it's just... Ah, it's frustrating. All right, this next one, um, <laughs> it's I, I'm not laughing at this. I okay. just want to preface it. I'm laughing okay. at something that happened to me that I'm going to tell you at uh -oh. the end. In Tennessee, there was an elementary uh, teacher and students that were hospitalized after an experiment involving dry ice. <sighs> so apparently there was an uh. experiment in class that resulted in 18 students and a teacher being sent to the hospital. They are all fine. They all okay. checked out okay. fine, but uh, there was a video apparently of social media of, of these third grade kids, and they were conducting science experiments. One of the science experiments involved dry ice. Immediately following the experiment, several students were reporting nauseous, and they went to the nurse, and the nurse said, we need to get you all to the hospital. Um, I didn't know this about dry ice, but dry ice is apparently, scientifically speaking, carbon dioxide in solid form. Mm -hmm. And as it starts to evaporate, it poses a risk when it melts that if it's not ventilated and well, uh, it, you know, ventilated, if it, it's inhaled, it can potentially kill you. Yes, I knew that. You know how? You know that? Because I knew it from a very special guy when I was growing up. Huh. Bill Nye. Bill Nye. The science guy. Yeah, That's see, right. I didn't know that. Yeah, I've, I did. I've seen dry ice used in a lot of experimentations, mm -hmm. and, and I didn't realize how well ventilated the room had to be. Good thing I'm not a science teacher. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but I say that, and the reason I, I laugh about this is because I, I would love to know if you were a science teacher and you've had these moments where you're like, oh, oh, no. You know, like. Oh, um, that's funny. Yeah, so. <laughs> I say that because uh, I went to a, a, I got two things to say. First off, I, I used to teach at a school where mm -hmm. we had a science teacher who was new. And he wanted new to, to try. New to teaching. Yeah, new to teaching. He okay. wanted to try new things. And I loved him to Aww. death. But he was the Steve Urkel of teaching mm. where nothing went right. Oh. And I just remember one day I'm, I'm I'm in my portable and I look out the window and the door <laughs> flies open and I see him with a burning trash can and he sets it on the ground and he's stomping on it frantically <laughs> and the students are all behind him and they're like ah! flipping out and there's just smoke filling the room and I was just like oh you know, my god you know what's weird that day they were dissecting pigs like, <laughs> yeah right oh, oh, yeah. what's going what on what happened uh, yeah it was it was so funny because I would just hear of the catastrophes that would happen and uh -huh. it, to me it was so funny because I'm like man those kids are learning real science yeah. they're like so <laughs> if ammonia and bleach come in contact, contact. yeah <laughs> but uh but then also the second funny story that I have to add to this is I went to a science classroom recently. Okay. And um, I thought it was really funny because there was like a religious kind of uh, shrine to uh, uh, SpongeBob. So it was. It just looked like a SpongeBob shrine. That's hilarious. But it was right under the thing where you pull and you like flush yourself out if Got you it. get chemicals on you. Mm -hmm. And I just pictured in my head, if anything goes wrong, Pray to the SpongeBob gods <laughs> as you pull the thing, and, and hopefully everything will be okay. Yeah. But uh, I'm I'm glad to see that the kids are okay and the teachers are okay. But mm. lesson learned about that dry ice. Now I know because I don't know. I I think I wouldn't really think to ventilate it well with dry ice. I thought it was just water. 
I mean, how much were they using? I thought it was vaporized water, but I, I, it's not. I don't know what, anything no. about that. But but I've seen dry ice being used. I mean, it used to be used in cinema all the time back in the day when they wanted to make something look like yeah. it was truly smoking. They yeah. would use that with water. But would those actors get sick? I mean, that had to be a ton. I mean, that's what I'm asking. Dry how ice? much dry ice was he using? In a very closed off situation. Yeah. Was so. he in a broom closet? Everybody <laughs> gather around. <laughs> yeah, but, we're but, gonna put 20 pounds of dry ice yeah, in here. Yeah. But I, I learned most of my science from two of the most greatest scientific minds in the world uh bill nye and mr wizard nope professor bunsen and professor beaker oh. yes from the muppets man those are the greatest scientists in, i was i was in the world's world were you really yeah, yeah you told me about that how love you love that world yeah i gotcha. but yes i'm big muppets fan oh. so i definitely yeah uh, yeah bunsen and beaker beaker there yep. you go uh all right next one this is another science um, article NASA is training teachers on the upcoming solar eclipse. Mm. So there is a solar eclipse upcoming. I don't know if it's going to, so it's April 8th. So it'll probably be shortly after this airs, I believe. I don't know. But, anyways, uh, there is a once in a lifetime solar eclipse and they it's coming right across the United States. It's going to be really cool. Mm -hmm. In fact, I saw that Delta actually has a flight that's going to follow the eclipse. I think that's awesome. That is pretty How bad. How cool would that yeah, be? Yeah, it's pretty cool. But uh, NASA is apparently doing a, um, a workshop for these teachers to help. The teachers learn how to conduct eclipse events safely and effectively. So there is a national uh, NASA education program, and uh, basically they are teaching the teachers how to help the kids see the solar eclipse without going. Hoo. Yeah, look right up yeah, at it. Looking yeah. right at it. Yeah. And um, and and they they are doing uh, experiments with the UV lights and and how UV beads react and apparently uh, showing them different ways of demonstrating the uh, the uh, eclipse. So I thought that was pretty cool. But Not they have a a uh, this is crazy. But they had to opportunity to this is a big word. They op had the opportunity to tour NASA. NASA's Glenn's Simulated Lunar Operations Laboratory and Graphics and Visualization Lab. Oh, okay. That's a lot. That's a lot. <laughs> Can yeah. we acronym that? <laughs> and, and they, they say they left feeling in, inspired. Mm. They said today was totally awesome. A really cool experiment. They felt like the student and they enjoyed it and they can't wait to pass it on. That's awesome. I love this. Gotcha. Because this is what we need more of. The experts training the the teachers and training the students and let's pass down that knowledge from the top yeah. you know i think that's great so uh it's really cool of nasa to put this on it looks like it was a free program and they had all the tools and everything provided that is so cool and not to mention to they probably sparked the interest of so students that are in that oh you man. Know what I mean? like, just to have the teacher come back and go so i went to nasa mm -hmm. and i mean Im to say immediately that, yeah. immediately yeah. the student's gonna go what what are you what did they do what you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, what they say. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Did you see a calculator? <laughs> <laughs> Was there a CI-84? Yeah. Uh, so, all right. Uh, this next one. Um, this one is uh, interesting, but uh, again, we're seeing more of this because it's an election year. Mm -hmm. In Utah, they are advancing in the House um, a, a uh, <laughs> they call it a bill that requ require teachers to be politically neutral in class. And it's going to ban teachers from endorsing, promoting, or disparaging certain beliefs or viewpoints, including religious or political beliefs, sexual orientation, any, anything on gender identity. And uh, apparently it's been a year in the workings because they didn't want to put it out last year because this is year's the election that they can campaign on it. Yes. And it is going to basically forbid any discussions of pronouns, gender identity, anything with young students, but also all political symbols, pride flags, anything political, any social belief that they think is irrelevant to the curriculum, any perceptions that they believe they are uh, giving to these kids, political, ideological, it is going to basically tell teachers not to open their mouth at all. Yeah, I'm going to say, I'm like, what, like, what can we talk about? Yeah, and they said that it, the American for Civil, Civil Liberties Union of Utah said it is entirely too vague. It is a chilling effect on teachers and going to leave them at risk uh, for what they can or can't say to their students without punishment. And um, apparently the bill narrowly cleared its first legislative hurdle. It is on its way. Uh, so... 
We will see. 6-5 vote, passed it through, and uh, the beliefs that you're not even allowed to discuss, you have to be completely neutral, are religious, denomination, denominational, secretarian, agnostic, atheist beliefs, any viewpoints on those, political, social beliefs, or viewpoints, viewpoints on any sexual orientation or gender identity. And um, it, it would, however, interesting, uh, the bill, however, would allow teachers to wear religious clothing and jewelry, such as a rosary or a cross. Because that's your religious, that's your <sighs> right. At, yeah. I guess you can still wear it. Yeah. Like, let's say you had a Muslim teacher. You're going to tell her she can't wear. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. You, yeah. You'd have to let them do yeah. it. Yeah. So, uh, but, but. My question is, so are they, I want to make sure I understand. You can discuss it, but not give your viewpoint. Uh, it just says that they need to be politically they need to be neutral. neutral. Yeah. So okay. Yeah, that's that's interesting. But that's a fine line. Like who's who gets to determine whether or not it's neutral? Right. That's the sticking point. Yeah. Who yeah. gets to determine whether or not the discussion was neutral? And plus, <laughs> if the kids take it into a non-neutral stance, as you you're a teacher, are you you know do you are you still within your? Well, if the kids are debating it, theoretically, if I'm talking like a lawyer, I didn't do anything. They yeah. talked about it. Right. Yeah. So I'm in the clear. Yeah. I mean, I I always tried to be neutral on pretty much everything. Yeah. It's weird yeah. because I have I have strong viewpoints, but man, in the mm-hmm. class, I'll tell you right now, if you would have asked my students the election year for Trump and uh, Hillary, mm-hmm. uh, who I sided with, they mm-hmm. wouldn't tell you. They wouldn't know mm-hmm. because they literally would sit there and go. I don't know who this guy supports because I would talk about each of them. I taught government class. Yes. And I would talk about each of them uh, in an individual way and just mm-hmm. matter of fact. Mm-hmm. This one has this platform at which they're standing on. These are the the talking points. Mm-hmm. This one has this platform which they're standing on. These are the talking mm-hmm. points. Here's how this is going to operate. And they would leave there and go, yeah, he didn't. He you know, tell me one thing or other. Because I never would. Gotcha. Uh, but I think that that's a good thing when mm-hmm. it comes to that kind of topics and discussion. But I don't know. I, it, I would find it hard to be neutral if I saw students uh, acting out against something. You know, if they were attacking a student because of their gender identity. Uh, that's I would different. Find, I yeah. would find it be difficult to step back and just go, well, I have to be indifferent on this because me being indifferent is harming you by yes. not stepping up for you. Or would I be allowed to say, look, um, you cannot attack a person based on that. Is yeah. that is that crossing a line? Is that saying whether because then you're siding, you're going. Oh but, well, I well, I sided against the attackers. You know, oh, I guess it'd be, it'd be very sticky. <laughs> Again, yeah. I think we're we're kind of demonstrating the vagueness of that law. Yeah. Uh, all right, this one is a good one. I agree with this. I think that it is a solid step forward. In Kentucky, student teachers could be paid starting next year. Hmm. So student teachers, I was a student teacher once, and it says that they're going to give them a $5,000 stipend during their 70-day training period, earning about $9.52 an hour. Okay. That's not correct because they're not going to be working the 40 hours a week. I remember when I was a student teacher, and I would be working well after school and well before school and all weekend long to make sure those lessons were perfect. Got it. You know, but it's a step in the right direction. Yes. Because as a student teacher— when I was a student teacher, uh-huh. I don't know what everybody else's experience was, but the first week I was there, I had a um, the teacher that I was basically was my mentor. Mm-hmm. He walked me through. Here's how you do grades. Here's how this works. Here's how that works. Here's how this works. Okay. For one week. The rest of the time, for the remaining uh, 17 weeks. On your own. I was completely on my own. He sat in a back room, door shut. And <laughs> just literally was on his computer the entire time. He was buying and selling stuff on eBay. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. Got it. I'm just telling you the truth. We're, we're, I, I'm not saying we're. he was a bad one. He, he was great. He did step in a few times. But when I tell you thrown to the wolves, well, I'm doing that man's job. Yes. Entirely. Yes. And I was not getting paid. No, you were not. Time. No. And they were getting paid. Yes. And I always felt like, you know, that deserves some pay mm-hmm. because I can't take on a second job. No, you can't. I was a student. You're there all day. Yeah. I'm there all day. I'm yes. working after. Yeah. I'm literally reliant on student loans and living off the student loans that I had at the time. There was no way. So you would have gladly taken that money. Like, yeah. yeah please give that me. That $5,000 yeah. would have been a huge help. Yes. And I could see a lot of students, um, you know, wanting to become a teacher mm-hmm. that don't go the educational degree route because of the mandates that you do student teaching. Yes. Why would you want to basically 
work for free mm-hmm. for half of a year yes when you could just get a regular degree and whatever you want still work a job yep and then turn around and just do the certification exam later well then you're getting teachers that may not be up to par they, they haven't had that experience and also they might leave the classroom early mm-hmm. this is a good buffer for me to go oh this is really what it's like yeah okay because you got to actually see it yep and i stayed you got for in 13 it. years because of it that's right but uh but man, I will say I would have been nice to get paid. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, man. So in Kentucky, uh. I really hope this gets paid and passed. It, we, it's one of the things that could entice people to get education degrees mm-hmm. again because gotcha. it's going down, it's dipping. But if you tell them, hey, that last semester. Just so you're aware, you'll get five thousand dollars, and you'll get a job essentially, and a, a foot in the door at a, mm-hmm. a decent pay. I mean, teaching I think is okay paying. Yes. Plus, you get all the health benefits and the retirement options. There's there's perks, and that that's one of the biggest perks nowadays with any profession nowadays, and you do get it as a teacher is healthcare. Yeah, healthcare is big. Yep, I agree. Yep. So, uh, and also in Kentucky, they're looking at doing loan forgiveness to additional loan forgiveness in, a, in addition to what the federal government is doing. Kentucky, I love it. I think you're stepping up. I Again, teacher shortage requires solutions. That's a decent one. Gotcha. I'll give it to you. And who would have thought Kentucky has something great going on besides fried <laughs> chicken? God bless right? you. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, this last uh, thing that we're going to talk about, we're done with the uh, teachers in the news. Mm-hmm. Now we're going to go on to find out uh, a little bit more from the um, the area of Reddit. Now, Reddit, <laughs> Reddit is discussing something. There was something discussed that hit me hard because we discussed it prior. Mm-hmm. And I didn't know, I never saw any follow-up as to what's happening. In Florida, remember how um, our government has uh, basically started to attack teachers' unions? Yes. We talked about it, how your used to be that union could deduct your your union dues from your paycheck. Yep. And it was easy, simple, done. Mm -hmm. And the union rates of being in the union were high because of it because it was literally i got a postcard i remember joining the union yeah i remember this yeah i got a postcard and said do you want to join the union i said yes and then it said okay what's your name and your uh number and i gave him my employee number yep the next month it was deducted my union dues and i was a member of the union you needed you didn't have to do anything after that so easy yeah so anyways in florida we did pass a law that made it more difficult to stay in the union. You have to submit your dues separately. They're no longer deducted from paychecks. But we also increased the the requirement. It used to be that you needed at least 50% of the teachers in a district to maintain the union. Mm-hmm. Now, it's 60%. And somebody posted on Reddit, they said, hey, question, how is your local union doing? Are you at 60%? Or are you below it? Mm -hmm. And a lot of them are saying, we think that we're going to lose it. This is the first year that we've had that 60% requirement. And it's coming down to it. And I remember when they made the 60% requirement, there was already like 10 or 15 local unions that were not at the 60%. So not only now do you have to have a higher number, but you're making it harder to get that higher number. That's right. Which is the goal. And that's, I was going to say, done by design. Yeah. Yes. Now, the, the crazy thing is, is I, I didn't realize this, but this bill to squash the teachers unions that say you have to have 60% membership applies only to teachers unions. And the bill explicitly got rid of the mandate for police and fire unions. Wow. So police and fire unions are not bound by this. And they can have it deducted from their paycheck. Yeah. And they can maintain less than 60% to keep their union. Mm-hmm. Isn't that wild, man? It, I mean, it's literally <laughs> like you you literally pass the law and go, we're directly attacking you. Yes. If you're a teacher, you're going to be taught a lesson. What was the point of that? You know what the point is. But what, I mean, what what satisfaction do you get out of crushing teachers' unions? Because they can. I mean, out of hurting some of the most vulnerable people. We're in the 48th lowest paying state. Yes. And you're continuously just crushing us. It makes no sense. I do, and and I, I don't know what the end game is. Privatization or uh, idiocy. I don't know what it is. Are you looking for a more idiotic public that's easier to manipulate for a future political gain? Mm. Or are you looking for privatization so that you can make more money on the back end? Do you have pe- people, friends, family, investments in this stuff? I just think it – I just wish I knew – 
what the end game was. And, and I wish they would come out and say what they're trying to do instead of trying to play these games like, oh, look, you failed. No, we didn't fail. You attacked us. And you made it hard for me and you made it damn near impossible for me to do certain things. Yep. And, yes. and, but it says, you know, they're worried. They're losing leverage. Uh, the district is discussing a lot of changes. They're not going to be able to come to the table. And, and it's it's a uh, it's a weird power play when we're literally fighting for the pennies that we already get. Yes, it's it's it just doesn't make any sense. I think what's odd for me is a guy looking from the outside in. You're making it harder to make our country better. Yeah, you literally let's think about basis education. One of the most everyone will no one will argue education is one of the most uh, important things in the country. No one yeah. will say it's not. Right. But then on the other hand, you're making it harder for me to give that to the people. Yeah. <clears throat> what bothers me the most, I think, is that a lot of these northerners move to Florida mm -hmm. and they come from states that are very pro-union. Yes. And a lot of them have the money to move to Florida yes. because they had a union yes. job yes. and have great retirement options. Absolutely. And then come to a state that is destroying the unions. It's okay to have a different viewpoint than the politician that you politically yeah. support. I can support one politician and go, I really like you, but, but this you, is wrong. This has got to change. Yeah, this you is can't not treat right. these unions this way. No. Imagine the outrage if they did that for the police and fire unions. But and that's why they not, don't. And yeah. that's why they don't do it to yeah. them. And then they're, they're continuing to attack. You know, as oh, we're indoctrinating, and that's how they get by with doing it. They say, oh, we're crushing the union. And they go, well, well, you shouldn't crush the union. Well, they're indoctrinating your kids. Okay, oh, we'll crush the union. Crush them, yeah. You know, it's like come on. No, <laughs> don't believe everything you. Don't take everything at face value. Yeah. You guys have to, to do your own investigations. You do. Yeah, absolutely. You really do. Yeah, but this this uh, this thing with the whole 60%, it worried me when it first got passed. I, I remember this, know, too. I didn't know how it would be taken, and now I'm seeing it, and uh, it's worrying me even more. So yeah. uh, hopefully those teachers' unions get the, the um, additional help that they need. Mm -hmm. If you are listening and you're not a member of the union, it's time. Yes. You know? Join the union. Try to try to help the teacher. And I don't know why we ever went to a country that's anti-union. You know, we literally were built on unions. The unions with the railroads, the the oil industry, the the steel industry. We created some of the best jobs, some of the wealthiest country. We became one of the wealthiest countries in the world because of treating the worker right. Yeah. So I hope that you, you join the union, support your union, let them know, yeah. and uh, try to help out some of these districts. You know, call up your local union district if you're in Florida, especially, yes. and say, "Hey, what's your membership at?" Mm -hmm. If they say 57, 56, or anything less than 60, say, how can I help? Yes, because you know, it's going to affect and, you. And start to talk to people in your school. You know, go, yeah. hey, oh, man, what are you at? Uh, are you, you're not in the union? What? I mean, I remember talking to other teachers, and I go, what? You're not in the union? They go, no, no. And they'd be a new teacher. And they uh, go, I don't see why. And I go, I'll tell you why. And I would give them my personal experience. Mm -hmm. I say, you know, when I was first starting out, I almost got wrongfully fired. I went to the union and the union supported me, did the research, realized they were wrong yes. and went after the school and I got rehired. I said, that's the protection that the union gets you. They, they're they fighting for it. I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah I didn't so, know about you. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, definitely. I hope I hope that they're able to do that. So uh, James, how can people find you, my friend? As always, the same way on Instagram and Facebook. It's James Yon Comedian, Y-O-N. And thank you guys for the continued support. Thank you guys for messaging me as well as following me and liking the crazy stuff that I do. Yep, and devincomedy.com for all the upcoming tour dates, uh, as well as if you need me to speak in your school and Teachers Pet Care for the charity. And don't forget the Board Teachers Comedy Tour, the big tour, touring all over the United States. I'm on those shows. I'll hopefully see you out there. So go to boardteachers.com for those uh, tour dates as well. Thank you all. We'll be back next week with a brand new episode of Crying in My Car, podcast for teachers. There might be a clip up there. There might be a clip down there. If it's got our face, if it's other people's stuff, yeah, come back. Don't don't click on that. You know, but us suggested things. That's us crying in my car. Devin Siebel, James Yon, board teachers. Watch, watch, watch. Um, new trailer for Indiana Jones. No, don't do that. Don't do that. <laughs>